Good morning. If that prelude didn't wake you up, then you are really tired. I'd like to welcome you all, all of you here and all of you in Facebook land. I want to mention to those online that today is communion. If you want to gather your elements, now would be a great time to do so. Uh, please look at your bulletin for your announcements. There's quite a few. We're just going to highlight a couple. The blood drive is September 7th, and they need, uh, they really need our help with all the disasters we've had. The Red Cross is really hurting for blood. If you're new to the church, or if you haven't been here a while, or if your information changed, or if you'd just like to say hello, there are cards in the pew pockets that you can fill out, put them in the offering, and if you would like a visit from one of the pastors, just make a check, and we'll, uh, we'll seek you out. Our friends at the Lady of Angels Chicken Barbecue, or Chicken, Lady of Angels Church is having a chicken barbecue. And on September 23rd, um, I asked, and it's a fundraiser for, I think, a new parking lot. The ABY convention, the youth will be November 10th to 12th. If you're interested in that, get a hold of Bill Beck or call the church office. And there's an update from the search committee that you can read, and you'll hear more about that in a bit. Uh, there will be uh, treats in the fellowship hall after church today. A reminder, Dan Shetty is gonna be here next week. He's one of our um, missionaries. So we're gonna have an early bird dinner and then listen to what he has to say about his mission in Lebanon. This is an awesome, op awesome opportunity to hear more about it and be more supportive. Um, it appears that COVID is making another appearance in our area. So we called the county health department and we now have 180 COVID tests. So if you want to take a couple home, there's some in the ta on the table in the court, or um, if you want to stop in, May will give you some during the week. But um, let's all be diligent. And we're gonna have Ann Gross come up and tell us a little bit about crop walk. It doesn't seem possible it can be time for it again. Make sure you talk in. Good morning. I'd like to just share with you a little bit about crop walk. Um, this month is promotion and the walk actually takes place October 1st. And some of you I know have heard this year after year, so please bear with me. There are others here who are not familiar with the crop walk, so I would like to share with them. Um, for over 75 years, Church World Service has been assisting the needy and has grown from serving a few countries to serving in dozens of countries across the globe. And where do they get their funding? One source is the crop walk. Um, last year, uh, with all the walks across the nation, they raised $6.8 million, and we were a part of that. The purpose is to, to improve the quality of life for people who are disadvantaged. Um, some areas that they work on are to improve agricultural practices, to provide sources of clean water, improve sanitary conditions, to make education more accessible to the young folks, to teach basic business skills, and they also assist in disaster relief. Um, for many years, all their work took place overseas. And in the 70s, people said, well, what about us? So CWS also works in the United States now primarily for disaster relief and to support food pantries. A quarter of what we raise comes back to our own food pantry. And this is true of every community that walks. Um, while they do give handouts in emergency situations, that's not their primary uh, focus. They want to make people to teach people and pride supplies so that people can become self-sustaining. Um, they do partner with other organizations for the sake of efficiency, and they also rely on many, many volunteers to their work. In Cuba, we support Crop Walk each fall. I think we've walked for about 40 years here. Um, it's really easy to do. Anybody can walk or, or give. Uh, to support this cause, that we just walk around Chamberlain Park, it's all on the level. We walk for an hour, if you're tired, there's a place to sit down, it's, it's very easy, we don't demand a lot. Um, and the other churches are involved, and we welcome anybody in the community who's interested in helping to join us. 
It might seem like one person can't make a difference, but as I said, 6.8 million. That started with each single person who joined together to walk in their community, multiplied by all the walks in the communities across the country. So one person does make a difference because it just grows and multiplies. Um, and it was mostly small donations. Uh, registration will take place out here in the fellowship hall each week this month. Um, I'll be glad to answer any questions, uh, help you with anything I can in regard to the crop walk. But I invite everybody to participate in some way. Think about, pray about what might work for you and how you might support this walk. It's, I think it, the work that CWS does is really important and uh, it's nice that Cuba can be a part of that. Thank you. Let's take a minute and greet our neighbors. There's people here that haven't been here in a while and I'm so excited. Uh, but remember, you have to sit down when the music starts. Let's join together in our responsive reading. It's in your bulletin. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. To you, o Lord, my soul. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy toward those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who love and hold him high and follow his covenant for their instruction. And now we'll stand, if you're able, and sing hymn number 59, Blessed Be the Name.
As we enter our time of prayer, please look at your bulletins and note the people on our prayer list. And uh, I'm sorry to say that our friend Diane Heckenberg has passed away. That would be Anne's sister-in-law. Um, there are also are some um, additions, um, or extra prayers, I guess. Uh, Colin is going to be having some more medical testing, Linda for upcoming surgery, and her son Brad, who just had shoulder sh surgery. And for all of those who remain unnamed, but live in our hearts and minds. Our friends of the week are Faith and Paulette. Their addresses are in your bulletin, and they're both recovering sur from surgery, so I know prayers will be appreciated. Let us pray. Father, we come before you in awe of your grace and love, and we ask your blessings on each of us and all who seek your forgiveness and healing. From the tiny baby offering his first cry to those who are writing the final chapters of life, we ask for your comforting hand of understanding and your strength in times of conflict and discontent. Be with our leaders as they determine the direction of our country and the involvement in our world. So many are suffering as a result of storms and fires. May they feel our prayers as they face such tragic times. Be with those who are living in a world of discrimination and appalling conditions, and be with those who have the ability to help. Help us to realize our priorities and identify how we too can be part of the solution to the issues that we're facing. We read in Hebrews, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging each other, and all the more as you see the day approaching. For years, Christians have shared together this prayer of promise given to us God's children. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Um, our special music is going to be on another Sunday, so we're going to skip right over that. Um, could our ushers come forward for the offering? Hmm? Oh, we have a song. Sorry, I do this all the time to him. <laughs> okay, uh, Rock of Ages, and it's in your insert. You want to stand?
may be seated. Okay, now I'd like the ushers to come forward. We read in Psalms 54, 6, with a free will offering I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good. As God has given to us, may we give back in our time, talents, and tithes. Father, we, we bless these gifts. We thank you for all who have given, and may these be used in the betterment of your church and your world. Amen. It's my honor to introduce Pastor T.J. Davis to our pulpit. I may, you may have read in the newsletter, uh, bulletins, pretty much every place we could put it, so you know a little bit about him. If he wants to share more, he can do so, and I believe he's going to be around after church, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, he's going to be around after church, too. So we welcome T.J. to, uh, to the pulpit. I'll say, try that again. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good to see all of you. I am extremely glad to be here in Cuba, New York, with you at First Baptist Church. I believe that uh, uh, my being here is a work and an act of God. 
I just need you to believe the same. <laughs> Turn with me to Mark chapter 5. I want to start by giving a special thanks to the search committee and uh, all who have worked to allow this day to be what it is and allow me to be here. My wife is not here. Uh, she's working. Uh, she's a physician and she's working some 24-hour shifts this week, so add her to your prayer list. Uh, but when we come back, you'll, you'll get an opportunity to meet her as well as uh, my two daughters, Naomi and Nora. Mark chapter 5 is where we are, um, verse 38. Verse 38. There we go. Oh. All righty. I want to read verse 38 through 43 for your hearing. He went in and said to them, hold on, I think I'm seeing two different things. Okay, let me, okay. Good, good. We're almost there. When they came to the home of the synagogue ruler, Jesus saw a commotion with the people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said unto them, while well, this commotion and wailing, the child is not dead but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the fa child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the right hand and said unto her, Talitha kum, which, is, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and walked around, and she was 12 years old. At this, they were all completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. We're on the same page. I like that. I'm just simply going to talk about faith uh, this morning. Uh, being that most of you all don't know me, and I don't know most of you, it will be hard for you to tell someone else about me. It will be difficult for you to attest to my character. And as I, it will be difficult for me to say what I know about you. But one of the things you can do if you wanted to learn more about me is talk to my wife. <laughs> or listen to the conversations that I have with my wife. Perhaps read our text messages to see what kind of conversations we have. What you cannot do is only read one or two text messages and give a clear indication of my relationship with my wife. You can't hear one conversation and think you know my relationship to her. That is the key to understanding the Gospel of Mark. In order to understand the Gospel of Mark, you have to read the whole book. I don't have time to deal with the whole book this morning, but you can't read chapter 5 outside of chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4. You can't read chapter 5 outside of chapter 10 to really get what Mark chapter 5 is trying to say to us, brothers and sisters, you have to read it in its whole context. And in this whole context, Mark chapter 5 is actually the first book of Mark. Chapters 1 through 4 serve as an introduction to Mark chapter 5. But Mark chapter 5 is actually the first true book of Mark. Mark chapter 5 is set up by Mark chapter 4, verse 41. And Mark chapter 4, verse 41 is almost like a, a statement, the main objective. It's the clause that tells you what the rest of the book of Mark is going to be about. Mark chapter 4, verse 41 says, they were terrified after they had been on this ship and the waves and the winds had beat into the ship. And they asked each other, 
Who is this? The old original King James says, what manner of man is this? That even the wind and the waves obey him. And the rest of the book of Mark is to answer that question. What manner of man is this? We flip over to Mark chapter 5 and we see the man who has power over demons. The one who has, next story, power over sickness. And in our chosen passage this morning, the last story is the man who ultimately has power over death. That's my sermon in a nutshell. I could sit down from here, but I won't. <laughs> Jesus shows his miraculous power as the suffering servant, God in flesh, who has come to redeem man. And the, the key that ties all of his power together is faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith is how we know God and how we continue to know God. Jesus said, I couldn't do many miracles in Nazareth because of their, their unbelief. Faith is the key that allows Jesus to move the way he does throughout the gospel of Mark. A demon-possessed man a sickly woman, and a dying daughter. All are to show us how to have faith in Christ. In order to have faith in Christ, we must believe in the power of God. That's point number one. That's actually verse 23. You said believe in the power of God. That's such a simple point, but it's such a tough thing to do. Verse 23, we're getting there. Okay, thank you. It says, and he pleaded, seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet. This is Jairus. And he pleaded earnestly with him, my daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her that she may be healed and live. The first step to faith is knowing that all things actually come from God. Everything comes from God. As the psalmist said in 121, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. Jairus knows that if he's going to be helped, it's going to come from this man they call Jesus. I'm mosey alone, but something that interests me as I read this passage was, Jairus is introduced as the synagogue leader. He is the pastor, if you will, of the largest synagogue in the area. And as Jairus is seeking Jesus from help, he leaves the synagogue to go find Jesus. The synagogue leader is not in the synagogue. You would think being a leader of a religious space, you could find help where you are. But he leaves the religious space to find Jesus because, brothers and sisters, the power is not in the building. The power is in the manifested Christ. So Jair is understood, I don't need positions where there is no presence. I don't need to be religious just for religious sake. Unfortunately, it doesn't take faith to have, create a system. It doesn't take faith to create a program, a religious program. So all over the world, there are churches open this Sunday morning that are operating purely out of their religious conviction that don't cultivate and nurture a committed life to the Savior. First Baptist, what will you be? 
What do you desire to be? Truly, really. What kind of church are, are we going to be? Are we going to be a church with good programs? Or are we going to be a faithful church? I know this is not the way I'm supposed to preach. I'm supposed to get on your good side. <laughs> but I, I, I want to be pure in my intentions if you all are to select me as your pastor. I'm not interested in coming to a church that has good programs. I want to be in a place of faith, a faithful church, a church where people walk together and stand together and they let out their truth. They're truly vulnerable with each other. They don't mind sharing where their struggles are and we pray together and we learn together and we grow together. And we're delivered together in Jesus' name. Will we be a church that builds our community and raises the standards of faith for this entire diaspora? Will we be a church that is a safe space for all ethnicities, all creeds and cultures? Will we be a church that reconciles brotherly love with one another as Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians chapter 5? Will we be a church that builds the kingdom of heaven even here in Cuba and throughout the rest of the western New York area and perhaps throughout the world? Or are we going to be satisfied with call to worship, a hymn, a responsive reading, a song, and a benediction, a sermon and a benediction. What is God calling us to? He has to believe that the power is not in his synagogue. That's a hard truth. And maybe the way we think it ought to be done may not be the way Christ wants to do it now. That's a hard truth. In order to believe in the power, he must partake in the power and be changed by that power. So it starts with us. It starts by us believing that God is going to do something different. He may call a black preacher to a white congregation. Or is that the elephant in the room nobody seems to notice but me? <laughs> he may call a young man and a young family to a church that has a majority of mature believers. He may call a man from Indiana to Cuba, New York. Because the power is not in our traditional program. It's in the power of God. The next thing, in order to operate in faith, and I'll run through this one because I really don't have time. Bill Beck told me I had 25 minutes. It's the fear with reverence. As we learn God and as we know God, it's to respect what he has done and accomplished in our life. If I had time, I would really deal with it. If I was here next week, we would do a series. But it's to really reverence God. To believe in him, but then to have respect for him. Again, Hebrews, the quote for, the, for, our, for this week, that he who comes to God must believe in him and believe that he's a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. And then thirdly, as I prepare to close, I will say that the third point, and one of the most poignant points of walking in faith, and I mean true faith, is living with laughter. 
You can't be a faithful person if you're overly concerned about how other people see you. Verse 40 says, they're making all the noise and they're making all the ado. And Jesus says, what is all this commotion about? The girl is not dead, she's asleep. It says, but they laughed at him. The authorized King James or the, the uh, ESV perhaps would say they laughed Jesus to scorn. They not only laughed at him, but they mocked him for saying that. When I told my colleagues that I'm pastoring a church now of collectively of 400 members and everything is settled in good and I'm gonna move to Cuba, New York, if they call me. Brothers and sisters, they laughed at me. If you tell people that you're interested in doing what we are about to do, there are going to be some people who laugh at us. When we tell them we want to do the great things that God wants to do from Cuba and impact the rest of the world, they're going to laugh. But the good news, brothers and sisters, is while they were laughing, God was working. While they were laughing, Jesus was putting them out, preparing to do his greatest miracle at that time. If you're going to walk faithfully with God, they're going to laugh at your past, they're going to laugh at your present, and they're definitely going to laugh if you tell them what you believe God is doing in your future. Oh, small town like Cuba with 3,000 people, Oh, they laugh at your past. They'll say, I remember when he and she used to do this. They laugh at your present. What we are trying to accomplish now, and trust me, brothers and sisters, they're going to laugh at the vision and the goals and the desires for our future. But that doesn't mean God is not working. He puts them out. He lifts up this girl and he shows his disciples, not only do I have power over demons, not only do I have power over sickness, but I have power over death. And he'll show that ultimately when he mounts the cross of Calvary and he dies and all of his disciples were gone away and they were still laughing him to scorn, casting lots for his clothing, gave up the ghost, and he died. He truly did die. He breathed his last. His tongue was glued to the roof of his mouth. Flies were going in and out of his mouth and landing on his eyes. He really was dead. So much so that they put him in the grave, sealed it off, and counted it over. But Resurrection Sunday came. He conquered death. And it's because he conquered death that we can believe in him for everything. We're preparing to participate in the Lord's Supper. And we can only do that because of our faith. The old hymn says, were you there when they crucified my Lord? And in some ways you can say, no, I wasn't there physically. In other words, you can say, yes, I was there because sinners were there. It is because of that faith in what he has done that I invite you to the Lord's table today. It is because of that faith that I'm going to invite you to walk in obedience to Christ as he has commanded. Can I have the officers to join me who are going to help me serve in the elements? Claudia is my right hand woman. She's perfect at this.
God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for faith. We thank you that even when we were sinners, you died for us. That you planted your faith in us that we may know you and know how to walk up before you. Accept our faith today. In the places where we lack faith, increase our faith. Bless us as we share in your elements, in the body and the blood of our Lord. And God, see us as we are. Help us where we need to be strengthened and build us up in the places that we're torn down. It's in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. I want to ask that Brother Philip would lead us in our. Take that off first. joy it is to share this moment with you. Some of the most intimate moments we can share together is at the Lord's table. On the night that Jesus was to be betrayed, he had a supper during the Passover. During that supper, he took a piece of bread and broke it. I want to bless this bread, and then I want to invite you to eat the bread with me. Lord, thank you for your body. It is because of what you have done on the cross that we have received life everlasting. Thank you. Amen. You take the bread and eat all of it. After the supper, he raised a cup. In it was the fruit of the vine. 
do pray with me. It is because of the blood of you, of you, you shed on the cross that has redeemed us from our sin. It is with gratitude that we take of the cup. Amen. Would you take the cup and drink all of it? According to the scriptures, after which they marched out singing a hymn. I don't believe we're going to march out, but I do believe we're going to have a hymn together. Would you join hand in hand as we're led into Blessed be the name, blessed be the time. May the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. I didn't see a. I didn't see a. Is there a benediction in there?